Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use an image plane in GeoPix to map out a simple uh, planar setup that you can then later project content onto using the IO tab or any other workflows you might want. Uh, this is a workflow that is particularly popular in uh, Christmas light setups where you have like a, a very simple just image of your house and you wanna do some planar mapping. Uh, and it's as useful to kind of map things out in a two-dimensional way that's based on, you know, real-world reference or some kind of design image that you have produced. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just clear out this scene, and we'll start from scratch here. So we've got an empty canvas and uh, something that's in the very latest version of GeoPix that you should definitely use. Uh, and this is GeoPix build 15.238. Um, this is the uh, feature for dragging you know, information and data straight into the viewport. So if you have an image in your computer somewhere, just drag it from Windows Explorer uh, straight into your viewport. So this is an image that we saw just a second ago. Uh, and this does a few things for you. First, it creates a geometry uh, primitive and it sets it to uh, the plane type. And then after that, it does a few other things. It scales it so that the aspect matches the image um, and you also have the emit color texture slot filled with that texture. So your actual lighting conditions in your scene do not have any bearing on how well this shows up. It's essentially an unlit texture. Uh, the last thing I'll mention here is that when you import the image, uh, it turns off the bloom, right? So bloom is something that's on by default, which makes the pixels glow when you see them animate. But this turns this off because this will essentially create uh, kind of a a glow that might be a little bit distracting when you're trying to actually trace uh, things in the picture. So this turns off bloom, but you can turn that back on by clicking on lighting, uh, scrolling down to image effects, and just turning on bloom. I will leave this off because this is really useful to have off for this part of the process. Um, and once you have this down, uh, this is honestly ready to start drawing on. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the create tab and I'll make a uh, fixture object. And you can see this is right up on the actual plane. That's fine. So we'll go ahead and go into Pix mode for that fixture. And we'll click on the Pix Add tool. And we'll just start tracing some stuff in this uh, scene. So I'm going to start just by uh, clicking on every other one of these little uh, wooden sticks that are coming out of the roof. And we'll just kind of make a simple outline. And uh, once we get up there, uh, that maybe that's like the end of that strip, right? So we'll go ahead and hop back into object mode and we'll go ahead and move down to the next one. Now, the way I'm going to handle this is just duplicating the fixture I have with control D and I'm going to go into pix mode and I'm going to uh, do a control A to select all those, hit delete on my keyboard. And then I'll go back into add mode if I'm not already there. And I'll just go ahead and start adding the next row of pixels. So we'll just kind of trace this all the way to the end. And you can see this process is pretty straightforward from here. It's just a matter of tracing what you need. And uh, you know, we'll go ahead and finish this like a row off here. And uh, you know, hopping back to object mode, duplicating, going back to pix mode, clearing all of those, and starting your next trace. So I'll go ahead and uh, hop up here and we'll just trace out a few more for the sake of getting something interesting going in our viewport. And I'll just go ahead and cycle this back up here. Why not? Um, all right, so that's good to go. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and make one more that extends down to the left side of this center area. So we have some width. Um, so I'll just start here and we'll work our way. I'm just going to pick some points randomly now because it's getting a little bit sparse as you can see. Uh, you can really zoom into that image if you need to uh, because this exists in 3D space. Yeah, you know, it's not orthographic. If you want orthographic, by the way, you can click on the Z axis icon up here, which will snap you to a purely orthographic view. However, um, if you're drawing on geometry, it's not actually necessary to be in orthographic mode because you are planting those pixels directly on the geometry, and the geometry is aligned with the plane. So uh, perspective is just fine, right? Maybe there's some 
uh, reasons you'd have for being able to have this kind of 3D perspective uh, pan tilt. So anyways, uh, this is almost where we want it. Let's just add a few more pixels here for fun. Take it to the edge of the eave and there we go. Uh, so we got a few things here and they're all dark. There's no light coming and that's because we have no projector. So uh, there's a couple ways we can make a projector, uh, but the simplest way is to just create it from the create menu. Uh, when you create a fixture, I'm sorry, a projector and you have nothing selected, it will come in uh, as a default shape and size. So let's go ahead and do that first. Um, so it comes in as a unit projector, meaning it's scaled to you know the default unit cube size. Uh, and then you can kind of move that back and scale it up and do what you got to do with it. Um, that's fine. One other way you can do this is to select your fixtures, go up to the create menu and then click on projector. And this does the same thing, but it actually scales the projector uh, to kind of a best fit around the fixtures you had selected. So if I move this back on Z, you can see that this is uh, encapsulating the the pixels that we have here nicely. So uh, two ways of working. Uh, in the end of the day, you might want to uh, set your projector size to like a 1920 by 1080 aspect if you're working with that kind of content. Uh, or maybe you don't, maybe it's generative content and the ratio, aspect ratio doesn't matter as much. Uh, but that's up for you to decide. Uh, for this video, we're just gonna leave it, you know, kind of covering the entire uh, canvas and so I'm going to center it up and just scale it up so that it's covering everything Okay uh, Now that we've got the projector in place and we can verify that it's working by uh, turning up the uh, Constant color um, Let's go ahead and make sure none of our fixtures Have any overlap so we'll just select one of our fixtures and we'll do an auto fixture offset and that will just ensure that we don't have any address conflicts, which shouldn't happen if we were duplicating fixtures like we were, because when you duplicate, it automatically offsets the fixture address as well. Uh, but that's a way to ensure that it did not happen. Uh, okay, so we see these pixels are lighting up red. That's looking good. Um, now might be a good time to kind of push this image plane back a little bit. And uh, also just to make it a little bit less uh, visually distracting. So we can kind of even fake a scene, right? We can make a, a fake two-dimensional scene here uh, that we actually see lighting on by uh, adjusting this plane uh, and making it a lit object. So when you import an image plane, uh, it's going to plug that texture into the emit color. Uh, and that means no lighting is going to affect that. So we can go ahead and um, cut that uh, path out and we'll just reset this. It's going to, of course, go gray. And uh, we can go ahead and reset the emit color to zero to so a black plane. And then over here for base color, we could just go ahead and paste our path right in there and uh, go ahead and right click on base color to reset it to 0.5, 0.5, And you can actually turn this up all the way if you want. All right, so that is currently a lit plane. And if we go over here to lighting, and we just fiddle with the environment lighting brightness slider, you'll see that we're adjusting that. So that's looking good. Uh, the next thing we need to do to actually see these pixels illuminate that plane is to go down here to point lighting. Uh, and this section, it should be off by default. Just turn that on and you'll see that we now have some light. Now this is getting close, but there's still some strange things going on. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice is that when you're at like a glancing angle, you see this uh, PBR material sheen, and that's because we have a roughness value of 0 0.5 by default. And this is uh, a, de a decent default for, you know, like geometry objects, but when you're actually dealing with an image plane like this, you probably want it to be more diffuse. So if you scroll down to the material section, just turn the roughness slider down, uh, I'm sorry, up to um, one, you can just type something in. And what this will do is kind of remove that reflective quality and it will just illuminate things. So uh, another thing I'm gonna do is grab all of our fixtures. Uh, right now the radius for the light is so big that it's just turning the entire plane red. So that's not very helpful. Uh, so if we scroll down uh, with the fixtures selected uh, to the lighting section, you'll see something called attenuation distance. Defaults 200. 
Uh, you'll want to tweak this. It just really depends on how big your image plane is. You might make this bigger or smaller, but you can just experiment with values until you get something that feels you know appropriate for your setup. So I think 30, uh, maybe 25 would be just fine for this image. Uh, and also these dots, I think they're a little bit too big. Um, so over here in pick scale, again, with all the fixtures selected, we can just type in uh, 0 0.5, maybe maybe one. The one's feeling pretty good. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So next I'll grab the lighting, turn the brightness down, uh, kind of make it nighttime looking, and this will give us more of a contribution from our pixels and less from the environment light. And we'll grab our projector go down here to constant color and just reset this with the right mouse button. We can go and turn it off. And now over here in the IO tab, just make a uh, macro and place that down, connect it to projector one or whatever you've called your projector. And uh, you can just click the play button down here, start that macro spinning. And when you go back to the editor, you will see your pixels lighting up. So that's it that's the process now you can actually go in here and grab a fixture uh, let's see let's grab the one that goes to the left here go back to pixel mode and you can continue adding pixels in this mode just nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do keep in mind though that the pixels you draw will now be glued to the geometry here so if you've moved the plane back uh, you're going to have to contend with that so uh, just make sure uh, you're aware of that but you can always just grab those pixels and just uh, flatten them on Z. You can do this at the very end too. It's not a big deal. So um, my own personal preference when working on uh, designs like this is I actually don't like to run a macro. Um, macros I feel like are a little distracting. I tend to do just uh, a projector and I'll just set like red. Red's a good constant color. Uh, you could use a different one if that's uh, messing with the vibe, uh, but yeah, you can pretty much just draw your pixels in like this and make sure your projector is big enough to cover, you know, all the areas you might be working. And for us, that's the image plane, right? I'm not going to go beyond that. So making sure that the projector covers that looks like I'm actually missing some of it down there at the bottom. So uh, just making sure it covers that entire canvas uh, ensures that, you know, every pixel we draw, we'll see it light up the second it hits the viewport. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. And if you have any other questions, just drop a comment on the GitHub discussions or down below. Thanks.